why is there a bootleg market if it's kind of like you put it out there until you get a cease and desist? What's it, it, what's it, the point of the the bootleg market? Um, the point of it, in a sense, is just creating something fun that that inspires you that you want to do. Um, you know, it's it's it costs a lot of money to get a license. Yeah, you know, to go to a studio and get a license for a licensed product, more of money course. than the average person can afford. So for me, part of the reason I got in the, into this was I wanted to create figures that of from films that I grew up in the 80s that I loved. And I started working down that path. And then I got into the scene and realized it's more about kind of the mashups and the twist ups mm -hmm. and stuff that um, that's like you cross this with that. Um, I had this little little uh, Muppet figure of the Swedish chef. And it's just like one of these Hallmark things, and it's it's his Bork, and it's a torso yeah. figure. And then I had this Robbie the Robot. So one of the figures that I'm working on right now is this Swedish chef as a Borg uh, from Star Trek. And he's I all black, really kind of hard. <laughs> so instead of Borg, it's Bork. Right. <laughs> you know, and I got Puns. these utensils <laughs> from... Uh, you know, the Borg arms, you know, one's got a spatula, mm -hmm. one's got a, you know, a tenderizer mallet, the other one's got a, got a cleaver. And what are you making those out of? So these are resin. So, so okay. um, these are the actual plastics from the figures from like the Borg. And I ordered these uh, accessories from the Swedish chef from the Palisades figure. So I kind of cut them down and combined them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put magnets in it. To give him magnetic, oh. articula magnetic articulation. So I've drilled out a hole and casted it as such. And so he's he's going to be able to magnetically put the different attachments on and have like, right. okay, he's got the cleaver in one hand. He's got the, the mallet tenderizer in another hand, uh -huh. you know. And and I even worked up a card, you know. But it's, it's a lot of work. That so, was going to be my next question. Yeah, so this is the mold for yeah. the base body. I just casted this, and I'm gonna un I'm gonna open it, and I cast it in resin. And I have a a pressure pot, which let me show you. This is my pressure pot here. Okay. And I've, the compressor, which we heard already, is down there. So you cast the resin in the mold, you put it on there, you screw it down, you pressurize it to about 30, 40 pounds of pressure, and it takes all the air bubbles mm -hmm. out of the cast. So when we pull this this figure out of the mold, and this is silicone, two part silicone mm -hmm. that you. So I made a one part, you know, I've cut it down, but when we pull him out of the mold, it should be a perfect cast. Yeah, you know, no air bubbles, no no bubbles on the surface of the figure, nice and smooth. Now obviously I'll paint this figure because I'm casting him in black plastic because or black resin. Because the Robbie the robot legs are black, mm -hmm. and there'll be less paint involved. So I'll paint the shirt, I'll paint the face, I'll paint the hat, and I'll paint the apron. Hmm. You know. And so, uh, but how long? Ahead. How long does that take to do? Well, it's a very labor-intensive process. So, so yeah. building the mold, building the mold, they use the Pringles can for this mold, and then it takes about four hours for this particular silicone to set up in the pressure pot. Mm -hmm. It takes about 10 minutes when you cast the resin. Then I've got to clean up all these figures because there's all this little flashing. Um, sand them down. I've got to clean up all the accessories. So this is one of the accessory molds that I've made. So this is the spatula. All right. Oh, that came out nice. I had to actually put some more holes in. <laughs> I love that you're looking at them for the first time while you're showing yeah. me. <laughs> well, this, one, I, this one I actually drilled holes in the mold because... The corners of the, the resin wasn't getting down to the corners of the spatula because you can see how thin that is. Right. That's almost paper thin. But if you cast it under pressure, it pushes all that resin down into the thin spots of the mold. So casting all these little accessories, this is just a hand, and the hand is filled. So he's got a real hand. I'll have to drill that out. It's really hard to see. I apologize because it's dark in the basement and it's and I'm casting a black resin. Right. But uh, I'll be posting these when they're painted and finished on Instagram. So you, I'm casting – I'm only going to do an addition of 10 of these. The first figure I did was this Yoda, and it was it was the child from, from the Mandalorian show on Disney, and I put him in carbonite. Okay. 
So, and again, and you're you you're always basing these on to to create these. You're using older figures or actual figures yes. that exist. Yeah. So the carbonite mold. Here's a better picture of the actual the actual uh, guy. Mm -hmm. So the carbonite mold was basically it was a Donald Duck in carbonite with the three carbonite things. So I casted the box. Then I got the the uh, figure of the Yoda when the when the three and three quarter inch figure came out, which was like this tall. Okay. And I actually put him in in the carbonite. So the originally I did it in black. So I did the 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 base. Then I actually put the figure with his accessories in epoxy sculpt mm -hmm. to make him look like he's in carbonite. And right. then I casted it. And then I made a gang mold. I did like like seven eight casts so i could pour like eight at a time okay and so i and i did an addition of 25 how many did i sell right two 